Can you imagine resetting what is possible in your fitness and weight loss goals just by thought alone? Well, today we're going to talk about how you can reset your mindset to give you access to your best version starting today. Welcome to the Body Project Podcast. I'm your host, Katherine Tanaka. I'm a fitness, nutrition, and accountability coach and the host and producer of this podcast, The Body Project Podcast. I typically interview the best fitness and movement professionals in the industry looking to learn from them how they use fitness as the access point to transform the way their clients look, feel, and think. Today on the podcast, we're going to be speaking about mindset. If you've heard this podcast before, I often incorporate mindset as part of the way that you can access your best version. On today's podcast, I wanted to touch about touch on about a little bit of how we can reset. We've been doing a four-part reset series looking at resetting your fitness getting ready for the end of the year, resetting the way you fuel your body from the way that you eat to the way that you are consuming sugar, and maybe some new habits that you formed over the last six months. Well, today I want to talk about mindset, looking at how your thoughts can create the way that you show up for yourself in your life. Now, we'll start off by sharing one of my favorite quotes that I've probably shared on this podcast before, but for certain I share with my clients all the time. It is by the great Gandhi, Mahatma Gandhi, and he said, man often becomes what he believes himself to be. If I keep on saying to myself that I cannot do a certain thing, it is possible that I may end by really becoming incapable of doing it. On the contrary, if I have the belief that I can do it, I shall surely acquire the capacity to do it even if I may not have it at the beginning. I love this quote because it really encompasses what research around cognitive behavioral therapy, around epidemiology has been looking at about the biology of belief, about how your limiting beliefs or your thoughts of what you think is possible or not possible allows you to live into that, right? It's almost like that glass ceiling that many of us have, whether it's in our fitness goals, whether it's in our weight loss goals, whether it's in our relationship goals or our business goals, right? I know for me, with my own business, it has been a journey of looking at my own personal beliefs, my limiting beliefs, and how I may be playing small for myself and my life. But in terms of fitness, in terms of this reset series, I'm going to talk a little bit about how limiting beliefs can be working against you in terms of attaining your fitness goals, in terms of how you are with your nutrition and the progressive uh, success you may be getting around that, right? So let's look at, I guess, some facets around limiting beliefs. And, you know, I've gone more in depth about limiting beliefs and self-sabotage in past podcasts with not only some fitness professionals, but I've done a podcast on specifically this, and I will list it below wherever you are catching this so you can get more details if you want to get a little bit more into the science or more into some steps of how you can shift things. But for today's conversation... I want to talk about specifically what limiting beliefs look like and what kind of attributes to self-sabotage, a little bit of the science behind biology of belief um, by Bruce Lipton, and I'll give you some examples, to give you an idea of where you might be getting stuck, and three things you can do starting today if you're looking to reset your mindset. And coming up in a couple weeks on August 31st, if you are looking to do a reset with me, I am kicking off a five-day reset looking at fitness, nutrition, and mindset and how I'm going to support you to gain the momentum and therefore the motivation to reset in the fall. So I'll give you more details about that. Um, and you can find out more details at www.katherinesnacka.com slash reset. Uh, So getting back to limiting beliefs. So limiting beliefs 
kind of is this creation of a skewed lens through which we look at our lives and ourselves. And it really skews our perception of what we are capable of and what we can and cannot do, right? This is the belief lens that keeps us stuck in this thought or patterns that often show up as excuses that run our lives, right? So oftentimes in the fitness realm, when I work with fitness clients, it looks like the excuses of we don't have enough time, I can't do this, this is not available for me. Sometimes it's that sneaky belief that we are not aware of, right? That maybe this isn't for me, I can't do that, I don't have time, those people have the resources that I don't. Those beliefs that keep us stuck in trying a little bit or waiting for that magic pill, that fad diet, oh, it worked for them, that won't for me. Looking for sometimes those shortcuts, right? Maybe that belief that I've tried before and failed for, so it's not available for myself right? These are the things, the beliefs that create limitations and those thoughts that enable us to continue to live within the confines of them, right? It's those sneaky things that, yes, you'll start a program for a week, three weeks, maybe six weeks, right? But that you start believing that you can only function within a certain confine. It almost becomes this self-fulfilling prophecy that we live into, right? And these, these limiting, limiting beliefs deeply entrench in our day-to-day -day thoughts and becomes a powerful practice that keeps us in patterns of self-sabotage. I've spoken about self-sabotage many, many times, but self-sabotage are those things that we start really strong with a fitness regime, a diet, but all of a sudden it's that weekend that derails us. It is that new boss that, you know, stresses us out, that allows us to go off course, right? So I wanted to give you two strong examples of the power of these beliefs. A very good friend of mine, Kira Day, who is the founder of the Passion Center, shared with me a lecture by Dr. Bruce Lipton. So Bruce Lipton is the creator of the book, The Biology of Belief, and he has these hour, I think it's a three or four hour long lecture about the biology of belief. And he tells a story that demonstrates the absolute power of empowering beliefs or disempowering beliefs. But this one isn't an empowering one. So there's this woman by the name of Janice uh, Sconfeld, who was an interior designer. She took part, of a, part in a clinical trial to test the efficacy of antidepressants. So she struggled for over 30 years with depression, and this pill, this antidepressant that she was put on, relieved her 30 years of experiencing depression. And they also did brain scans, right, to actually see physiologically if this drug made a difference on her brain. And the brain scans confirmed that the activity in her frontal precortex, where a lot of people, um, harbor depression, like that's your center where depression often gets started and continues, that the brain actually got physiologically changed by this brain scan proving that these pills made a difference. At the end of the trial, Janice was then told that she had not been taking a real antidepressant drug, that it was a sugar pill, a placebo, proving that the belief that she had that the drug was going to make a change in her brain chemistry was enough to actually make a change alone, right? So showing that this belief about what the drug would be able to do for her was, it was responsible for the improvement. So it actually wasn't a drug. It actually had no physiological uh, alter altering effect on her body, on her mind, but it was in her belief alone, the positive empowering belief that something was possible to make a change that actually made a physiological change. Now let's look at the other side. In 2014, in the New England Journal of Medicine, there was a, a um, drug trial that was published, sorry, a trial that was published showing that surgeries 
mimic surgeries and real surgeries can have the effect, the same effect as a real surgery alone. In this study, patients were candidates of a knee surgery for a torn meniscus that had debilitating pain. I know for myself, I had many meniscus tears over the years. So if you guys listening at home or watching have had these meniscus tears, you know how significant the pain is and how real it is day to day. So in this study, they had two groups, a group that had surgery and a group that had a mimic surgery, right? So when these people arrived to the operating room, uh, study surgeons in Finland performed a meniscus repair, a true meniscus repair of the torn cartilage, and a make-belief repair, right? Both groups had incision made and were closed. One actually had the full meniscus repair, and the other had no intervention in the meniscus. In both cases, these people were anesthetized, and both of them were cut had the incision, and the group that was not uh, did not have the meniscus repair still had the same time as the meniscus repair group, had instruments being passed over them. They couldn't see it, but energetically, even though they were under put under for these surgeries, the same procedures in terms of passing the instrument, time, hearing the instruments interacting with each other were still there. So this is so fascinating. Um, so let me just share with you a little bit of the results. I'm just reading it here. So the patients who underwent real surgery and the patients who underwent the non-surgical surgeries of repairing the meniscus both had equal improvement. So think about that for a second. Both groups got equal improvement. One had the actual surgery and one did not have the real meniscus surgery. So for those of you that actually know the pain of meniscus, meniscus is, is not a significant injury in that it isn't like a torn ACL, which I've also had, but it is quite painful. The nerve endings around your meniscus are quite sensitive and you feel everything. So imagine that for a second. You could suffer for a long time, you know, months, years, you know, with this chronic pain of meniscus. And so technically people go in and get that cleaned up so that there's no pain. I myself had the surgery. I don't think it was a placebo. They told me it was not, right? But imagine going into this fake surgery that you believe that you're getting surgery done on that meniscus and you come out and you are feeling as good as everybody else that had the meniscus surgery, but then you didn't actually have the surgery. Think about that. You believed you were getting the surgery and therefore you had this expectation, right? This belief that you would feel better. And therefore, because you believed it so strongly that you were going under you were going under the surgery and you would get better, you got better. Equal improvement just by thought alone, right? These two examples are quite powerful right? Demonstrating that empowering beliefs or limiting beliefs can actually create our reality, right? Dr. Lipton actually has groundbreaking research that has shown how powerful and inspiring our subconscious beliefs can be or can limit us to be, right? And that our body chemistry can actually mimic whatever we think and why this is so important and why, you know, in this podcast since the beginning with the last, over the last two years and in my online program, we've touched on limiting beliefs over the past four or five years is because this is often a missing link in your fitness success, that your beliefs on what is possible can be that rebounding effect, that yo-yoing effect that causes you to go back to where you started or sometimes even further back. That sometimes you can do the walk and walk the talk, but if you don't believe that you have the capacity to walk the walk and talk the talk, that this could be the limiting factor. Right, And so this is why this conversation was so important as part of the resetting. So let's talk about resetting. I'm going to talk about three things of what you need to know to reset your mindset around your limiting beliefs. Right, And you know, I'm not a psychologist, I'm not a cognitive behavioral therapist, and these guys are really the experts in aligning your mindset. Uh, and your subconscious beliefs around your behavior, 
right? But from a preliminary level and from what has helped my clients, hundreds of clients shift their fitness, shift their weight loss success, shift their shift their fitness success in a way that is powerful and ten powerful and tangible and sustainable is looking at fundamentally these th three things. The first is awareness. Becoming aware that maybe your thoughts are thoughts that you've practiced for years and years on end, thoughts that you've created because of one occurrence, thoughts that you've chosen, beliefs that you have said and lived into because of one time, because of a circumstance that you've now allowed to dictate your entire mindset around what is possible for yourself in your life and your fitness and your health, right? So ask yourself this question, do you see a pattern in your life that doesn't allow you to reach your fitness goals? Do you see a mindset, perhaps, that you have around what is possible? I know that I work a lot with working moms, and after becoming a mom, for those moms out there, you can relate to this, or dads, or like any life circumstance. After, you know, having a baby, your body changes. After a new life change, whether it's illness, whether it's a new job, whether, you know, you're sitting at a desk all day and people are ordering food in, ordering Timmy's donuts and coffees, or whatever it is, right? Sometimes a life-changing event like that shifts our relationship to what is possible, right? Mm -hmm. When I was single, that's when I competed in fitness, having doing three fitness competitions, basically winning first place in my first one, getting second place in my second one. It gave me access because I was single, right? When I had kids, that shifted. And sometimes we make these decisions based on these circumstances that, oh my God, that's not possible anymore. I'm not single, I have kids, I'm a working mom, whatever it is, working dad, that allows us to start practicing that belief or limiting belief that leaves us playing small. And so the first step to shifting your limiting belief and being aware of your self-sabotage is awareness, right? And so my question to you is, do you have some excuses that you've lived into and lived with for a long time? And maybe writing those down will make you aware that, huh, maybe it is not that anymore. So awareness is the first step. So take, a, the, take the time to look at this, right? We need to become aware first of our limiting belief patterns and maybe our self-sabotage to actually say, see that it is not true. and. And if it was true, maybe that belief no longer serves you in a way to move forward. If you find that you're on this yo-yo roller coaster of not having sustainable results moving forward, maybe we need to reset your mindset. All right, let's look at the second piece. I have been speaking a lot, especially in COVID, about self-care and self-compassion. Part of shifting your limiting belief is bringing in the conversation of self-care and self-compassion. Because if you take a militant approach to your limiting beliefs, you're going to keep yourself stuck, right? Because I believe that part of letting go of that is adding grace, bringing grace into it and saying, you know what? I need to add compassion into this because it is hard, especially in the sense of, this time with COVID, when we're looking to find a new normal, we need to reset in a way that is enabling, that is compassionate, that is caring and kind to ourselves to say, you know what? This isn't about let's go militant and no more excuses, no more limiting beliefs. This is how can we take a look in a way to nurture ourselves in a compassionate way to say, okay, this is time to reset. This is time to walk through this journey of how can we shift our mindset, not only fitness and nutrition, but how can we encompass our mindset around what is possible during this time. And the third and final thing I will share with you today is now we can create a new. Once you become aware, once you look at self-care and compassion, now we can say, let's create a new story around this. Let's create a new belief around this. A very good friend of mine, Bonnie Chan, this weekend, who is an incredible mother and leader in her community of how can we be better parents in this lifetime, shared with me a kind of 
I don't know, she's doing a 30 day miracle challenge with somebody, I don't remember his name currently, but she shared with me the idea of looking at our lives as a video game. That we have these lives that you can reset and start again, reset and start again. And I've spoken about this before in the context of how Gabby Bernstein says that you can choose again. So this is kind of like this. How can we now choose again what is possible in our mindset? How can we reset our game and say, okay, let's start that level over again? In the context of your fitness and nutrition, how can you reset the way you think about things? That belief that maybe you can find an empowering belief that you can live into, almost a paradigm shift of saying, huh, Yes, I am a mom of two, three, four. Yes, I have a new job. Yes, I have this COVID-15 to deal with, right? But how can we find an inspiring way to gain momentum of saying, yes, we can, that let's take it one step at a time and practice a new belief of what is possible and notice what patterns maybe sneak up and say, ha ha, hang on one second. I am the type of person that can shift this belief shift my mindset to empower me to feel good in my body, to empower me to be fitter today than I was yesterday, to empower me to fuel my body well with a green shake, right? With more hydration, more water, to move my body and say yes to myself from a place of self-care and compassion. If you would like some support in this, I am starting in August the 31st, a reset challenge. This is a simple five-day challenge to kickstart you to reset your fitness, nutrition, and mindset. I will handhold you through five days of resetting your thoughts and life. Join me at www.katherinetaka.com slash reset. It'll be a great group reset. It'll be super fun, super easy. I look forward to seeing you then. But make sure you tune in next week as I talk about how you can move through the next three months before ending 2020 so you can feel your best about baby steps, looking at fitness, nutrition, and the mindset of how you can shift and make real lasting changes after resetting, after gaining momentum, finding the motivation to keep working on the best project you can ever work on, which is you. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you haven't, please rate, review, and subscribe. It makes a huge difference in our podcast to be able to reach more people with the conversation of fitness, nutrition, and mindset around the Body Project podcast. Thank you so much. We'll see you next week. Bye for now.